What if it was possible to bring a game back from the dead? Basically, developed and ready to be deployed. Had just missed the mark and needed more time. What if we could go back and change the sins of the past? What if we could go back and bring back Imperator Rome? Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Imperator Rome. This is a game that I absolutely love, and it really saddened me when Paradox basically dropped updates for it. So I'm participating in Global Return Imperator Rome Day, 17th of February, 2024. We're bringing the game back. Come on, Paradox. I want everybody who's watching this video, if you've got spare cash, I want you to go buy the game. It's pretty expensive. But listen, if you own the game, go play it. Do a little bit of playing of it, right? Let's drive these concurrent users up. Let's make it happen. If the game is on sale, buy it on sale. Just tell them, hey, we want Imperator Rome. We want it back because this game actually had a lot of potential. I think it actually needed just a little bit more time. They were making something beautiful here. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of really cool fun. I always really liked playing up here because I liked reforming the tribes. I always really liked playing tribal stuff. There's also some really fun stuff you can do with like Sarmatia and things like that. There's the Morian Empire, all sorts of fun things you can do. And there's like map mods, right? You got the terrain map mode, the simple terrain map mode. Look at all this delicious, delicious terrain. You got forest, you got plains, you got the political map mode, you got the culture map mode. You can see the different cultures of the world. It could be fun to also play Ireland if we wanted to. You got trade goods, you got a civilization map mode, which is basically a measure of how urban and civilized it is. You got government types, kingdoms, you got players, and population. Oh boy, do you have population. I'm gonna do a Aestian run. I'm gonna play the, the Aestians. I'm gonna start with Saloya. I don't care about playing Rome. Oh man, oh, the nostalgia is coming back. So we got the province of Crafonia. And in this province, you can see this kind of highlighted area. We've got a bunch of little areas. And then we've got this province over here that has a different thing. And I believe if I go to, there's a map mode here. There's like different layers. So I can choose the governor policy. Now this will cost me political influence, which I get every few months. Right now it's commerce and food being increased, but I can say like, centralized population, which means population will move to the capital. There's a lot that we can talk about. Let's start with like politics. We're not going to get any research. We have trade routes in the capital. We can call an omen. Let's go for the morale of armies. Our armies are now stronger. So we spent our omen points. We have free idea slots. Okay, military ideas. Let's have a look here. Embracing a martial ethos. I believe if we take two military ideas, we do get tri tribesmen output. Permanent shipyards makes ships cheaper. Ooh, I like the reinforcement speed. And army morale recovery. And another morale of our armies thing. Boom, done. So now we're getting a 12% national tribesmen output. So if we go down in here and I click on, say, for example, my capital here, I think this is my capital, three pops in here, three of them are tribesmen. And they are producing a little bit of base tax and a little bit of, mo of manpower. Their base output is multiplied by this amount because like there's a 30% reduction, there's a settlement reduction. I think there's all sorts of different things that can you know, affect this. Yeah, I think the higher the civilization value, it lowers your tribesman output. There's also buildings in here, like we've got a fortress. We can, of course, build more buildings, but that costs money. We can also tactical considerations, like the fort level, the fort infrastructure capacity. There's the garrison, the barbarian power. These provinces here can generate barbarians that will come and fight us. I don't know if they actually do that right now. Yeah, there's a barbarian stronghold up here, for example, that will just continuously produce barbarians, which is actually kind of fun to play around with. So I think the thing to do is to click centralize population to so try and get the population to move over here. If I go to the view pops info, we got migration attraction. Yeah, there we go. The tribesmen are migrating here. I can also siphon pops here. And then when I click the migration button, this will like basically lift up all my pops and then I can settle them down on these lands. So we can't start any wars for a little while. Here's our military breakdown. We have one army. I can raise the levies. It's four pops from Venetia. I don't think I can actually recruit any legions. It just happens. I actually don't remember how this all works. <laughs> it's been a long time since I played this game. But what I am going to do is I'm going to move pops. Costs a little bit of money. Then I'm going to start a migration. Boom. And then I'm going to settle. Boom. And our goal is to settle and control more land with the settlement mechanic. I definitely want to settle here so that I can escape out through this. These migrationary units can, I believe during war, you can actually settle enemy land and just take it from them. But there's all this like empty land. So why wouldn't I just settle it? You know, that's my thought anyway. Nice. So then if I just go ahead and boom, I settle this. And now here's the fun thing is you can do settlement chains. Although I do want to be careful about how low my stability goes. But what I can do is I can settle this guy down, right? And then I migrate again. And then resettling only costs me one. 
And effectively, what I can do is claim a whole bunch of land, which is one of the goals we want to do. We want to claim all of this ASDN land if we can. And we want to make it all our culture. So we're going to go ahead and settle to here. I want to claim this whole province over here if I can at least. There's a lack of a governor over here. Change governor who wants to take it. Uh, we can go with Geert Bartas Skirbutius. He's relatively unpopular. He's quite loyal. But he's not corrupt. And he has some good statementship. So I say... We put him in there. Seems like a good candidate. People want to import leather. Sure. Galindia wants an alliance. I refuse any political agreements. My total goal is a domination. Let's go to speed four. Speed four always feels more comfy for me. So now we're in control. And there's a kind of a cute little trick you can do. I can move all these matrists. So I move them over, right? Now it'll cost me a little bit of cash. But then when I click the start migration button, I'll get nine units. And then I can settle one immediately back down. And what, now that I own this province, the pop growth that's happening here belongs to me. I get this pop growth, right? Whereas right now the pop growth on these sort of empty tiles is super low, hilariously low, like 0.1%, 0.1%. Whereas you compare it to a piece of land that I actually own, like even here, it's quite weak, but that's partially because, yeah, it's, it's, it's about the years of food supply. So for example, if you look at some of these things, right, we've got really good food supply down here and we've got no food supply in this area. If I can show... So where does food supply come in? Ah, oh, there it is, right? So yeah, having 10 years of food supply will get you a decent amount of population growth, which is a, it's a nice little thing, right? We have severely destabilized our nation, but that's actually fine. Let's keep on settling. And now you could also say that there's not really much of a point of actually doing this. It actually has downsides, which is fair. Also, we definitely want to be selling off our resources. It's going to increase our cash flow. Settle you there. Still got a few more we want to capture. Let me just go ahead and move some more pops here. Never want to take the last pop out. Let's take one, two, three of you, one of you, one, two, three of you, one of you, and one of you. And then we click the migrate button. This time we'll get 11 units. Always make sure to immediately settle back down. And now I've got 11 units that I can go send to the north. And while each individual one of these provinces doesn't actually produce that much stuff, it does produce just a little. So the territory rank here is it has population capacity. It's the most common territory rank. So how do I make this into a city? Ah, I need to found a city. So it needs to, I need to spend 300 money and 77 political power. Okay, so it takes a while to build up a city. I think settlements produce goods like leather, where cities produce other things. It's been a while since I've played. Did I say that before? Okay, we've got some disloyal characters. We've got a bad research ratio. We can fix the research ratio in our capital. I believe the ratio of citizen pops is because of the capital territory. So we need to get a bunch of pops in our capital, ideally. We'll work on that. We've got a civil war because this guy is angry. I bribe you. Boom. Bribery avoided. Migration. I'm going to give my stability a little bit of time to recover. My nation overview. Oh. Could unite Astuya. I mean, that's our goal, is to unite Astuya. So having low stability is actually fine by us for a little while. So we're going to look to settle up here to the north because that's also part of my culture. And if I do manage to unite my lands, I will become Aestuia. I will get four tribes and pops with my culture and religion, emergent center of civilization, local pop growth, fort defense, civilization level, and united. So over in Rubonia, political influence is based on how good my characters are in my nation. Military experience I'm getting from a baseline. Stability is going down because I keep spending it to expand. I need to hoover up. Well, there's actually not that many pops in here. It's quite depopulated. We may as well scoop a ball up. So this guy is the chief of a clan and you're the chief of another clan. Who can I... Okay, I can afford to annoy the guy on the bottom, so I will. Boom. I'm going to take an alliance from with Venedia in the hopes that I can use that against Galindia. Settle this. Keep going. I'm hope, hoping I only also need to do like one more migration to capture this whole area with my people. And the main reason for capturing land, again, it's not actually va that valuable to capture this land, but it means I get the pop growth. I get to benefit from this, this delicious, delicious pop growth. And some of the pops will migrate to other provinces based on their desires. Envoy from the Gallic power of Catanacea, import wood, go for it. Loving that commerce income. And in my opinion, it's all it always pays to be nice and chill in the early game and get yourself into a strong position. Now, I'm trying to remember how I centralize or decentralize my nation. Here's the government, offices, laws. Ah, yes, laws. So I can go for less centralization. And how do I show the centralization? Ah, yes. The lower my centralization, the cheaper it is to migrate. And the larger my levy. The higher my centralization, the more civilized my nation can become. I'll probably summon a war council pretty soon. So for example, I can do a coin minting initiative 
or a barter economy or have no exchange law, or I can encourage syncretism, or I can adopt human sacrifices. I believe down the left side is centralization. Down the right side is decentralization on the left, centralization on the right. And actually, decentralization is a totally valid way to play if you want. In fact, maybe we'll play decentralized. So like, we're a lot bigger on the map, but we're actually not much more powerful. And there are downsides to expanding. We'll kind of talk a little bit about those. Like the bigger you are, the higher your government rank, which kind of changes the way that like you can't have alliances with people who are a lower rank than you because you're like, you don't see them as equals. You can have sort of unequal treaties. I'm trying to remember where are the best places for some of these kind of cities. We've got Alpine climate, tribe, nearby river. Is being coastal an advantage? Coastal is an advantage, but it's not that big of an advantage. I wish this would just show me the total thing because it's like, it's minus 35%, but it's plus 10%, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and centralize all the pups into this tile right here. One, two, three, and then we do our, f what is hopefully our final migration. No, it's our second last migration because now, then I'm gonna scoop up all these pups and put them into the capital. I don't think you ever really wanna use these as actual um, military units because I don't think they reinforce, which means you basically just burn pups in war, which might not sound like the worst thing ever, but uh, is extremely not good. So now we are officially a regional power. We have a build cost reduction, a whole bunch of cool things like capital import routes. We integrate faster. We have diplomatic relations, political influence. We have more clan chiefs technically makes our military stronger, but technically also debuffs us politically. So I'm going to send all these guys down here. I don't think it really matters where I choose. It's fine wherever the capital is. It's all, it's all small modifiers. It's no big deal. Let me go ahead. I'm going to choose a place where I'm going to scoop up all the pops. This is four out of nine. So I'm going to move pops here. Then we're going to do our final migration, settle this down, and then we're going to send all these guys to go occupy the capital. You might be wondering, okay, so you've just, you've colonized a whole bunch of land, which is getting you some population growth. So the Dawilditis have become a powerful family, which means they should in theory raise an army for me now. So I can gain money. Yeah, I think that's worth it. I think losing loyalty with characters is not good. Political influence is a really useful thing but I am willing to spend it to keep people happy. Okay, let's join these armies together. Oh, we can desecrate the holy site. We definitely don't want to do that to our own holy site. We settle them all into the capital. And now I've got 10 pops here who are not the happiest in the world. But the cool thing is we've got an incoming migration and we should start seeing promotions and demotions. So for example, we could see here, there is a tribesman demoting to a slave and slaves output lots of gold. This one is promoting to a freeman and freemen produce a lot of manpower. We want, you know, a whole bunch of different people in here. In particular, we want citizens and nobles. So I think it would be good for me to run the social mobility, which will increase the rate at which my pops promote and demote. That does, did cost me a little bit of political influence to change that, but it means all the tribesmen that I fed into this province will start to turn into these other pop types that will produce a particular resource. And then in the not too distant future, we're going to think about war. We're just going to give, we're just give our, our stability a chance to recover. There's no reason not to. Take it nice and chill. We also want to turn Saloya into a city, which will cost us a little bit of money. Now my slaves are really unhappy, but that's that's normal. Also, there's like great wonders we can build. There's a lot to this game. And I've always really enjoyed this sort of like, you take this crappy sort of like unknown corner of the world and you turn it into something cool. All right, let's see what we can import. We can import some livestock from Elysia. Let's do it. We could also import another livestock to get the global benefit of it. Um, so I'll take another one from Haymontius and that will give me countrywide a 25% pop promotion speed bonus. We also get the monthly food bonus. Now it is more about stored food for pop growth, but that's fine. You know what, dude? I totally think we should just go full decentralize. Let's do it. I'm going to go for encourage syncretism, which will give us unintegrated culture bonuses. Our stability has decreased again, but it will recover faster the lower it is. So we're going to start reducing our centralization. So we're going to be a big migrating decentralized nation. That's going to be our goal. Let's call down another omen. This time I'm going to call Salia for that 12% state religion happiness, because that'll just, that'll kind of recover us back all the negative pop happiness here that we're suffering from. But we're finally getting Freeman in the capital. They give us manpower. And it looks like the uh, Antigonids have been carved up, unfortunately for them. We're getting our first citizen soon, which I'm excited about. So I think my main goal now is to try to save up cash. 
and turn my capital area into a city. Oh yes, this is how you do it again. So for example, we can do infrastructure spending here, which will increase the population capacity of the city. So I could spend political influence to gain population growth, or I can gain political influence. I prefer to keep people loyal. Um, so I can make a religious endowment, which gives a local city building slot. I could fortify the province, which gives fort infrastructure capacity, which is important for building fortress, which we no longer have one. So it looks like the title of elder in my government is low, and we want somebody with good charisma. This Lialglis guy is 23 years old and he's got a really good charisma, 10 charisma. He's reasonably loyal and he will gain statementship. So I'm going to put him in here. His effective rating is two, but as he gets better at his job, his effective rating will climb and he will slowly increase the happiness of our tribesmen, which should in theory lead to the better output of our civilization. Now we finally have a single noble and that's a really big deal because that single noble will actually allow us to develop technology. You could see in here, we are developing very, very small amount of technology per turn. This will get better as time goes on, as we actually turn this into a city. But let's see if we could maybe look into doing a war. So we'll summon the war council. It looks like we're going to be going after these guys. Ah, I need to have more stability before I can declare war. That's fine. They're allied with Venetia, which is annoying because I think allies usually side with the defender and not the aggressor which obviously I'm annoyed by because I'm going to be the aggressor here. The good news is we are making some science now. It's non-zero. It ain't great, but it's non-zero. Okay, I think I should probably perform a divine sacrifice here to get the monthly stability up. So I will do that. And that will get my monthly stability up by 0 0.15 per tick, which should be about like what? 1.5 per 1.5 stability per year plus a little bit. 1.8 stability per year. So that'll get me back up to where we need to be. I don't want to do this I'm okay with him getting more corruption. Right, let's go ahead and import fish. Then I guess I could give it another local import route. And then after a little while, we will get business investments up. So I'll be able to get another trade route in here and bump this up to have the benefit of two fish. But yeah, that light infantry defense is super good. It's gonna mean that we're gonna be able to fight a little bit better. So I'm gonna fabricate a claim on these guys because they have no allies. And I'm gonna fabricate on Crononia because that is the same area as my capital. So if I can scoop up this land, it'll be nice. And hopefully Venetia will come and join me in this war. And my also hope is that by going decentralized, I will actually get larger levies, which will allow me to unite my culture more easily. And I think my culture fight's pretty good in forest, but I might want to keep my civilization quite small for now. We'll see. I'm going to go with local autonomy here to hopefully bump up loyalty in the area. And that did not work at all. Harsh treatment would be the way, but I don't want to spend again to change that. It's annoying that that costs stuff to change it, but it's fine. Perfect. We have a Cassus Belly. Let's see what happens when we declare war. Let's find out. Fuck around and let's find out. Let's call our ally. They joined our war. Let's raise our levies and let's see how this plays out. Let's go conquer some land. Let's take them on. Let's get them. Fight him. Get him. Yeah. Oh, he dodged. Oh, okay. A little dodger. Catch you. I don't know who is who. Wait, so we're, where's the lawyer? Our cavalry is in the shock action. So we're getting a 10% debuff against their bottleneck action. Okay, but we got a thousand cavalry in the fight, fighting a single infantry. So this is doing big damage. Killing 15 men, 20 morale damage. They're killing 10 and doing nine morale damage. Yes, yeah, so they're getting wrecked. Boom, we wrecked them. We get popularity, war exhaustion. Excellent. They're going off into the, the wild. I don't know why they're doing that. It's a little weird. Could hire these mercenaries. How much do they cost? Ooh, damn. That's expensive. We could do it. We're not gonna. Oh, they're coming down to our troops down the south. You little jerk faces. I'll move my infantry down here to see if we can do something about that. And I, I think I have the money now to make a city, but I have been spending my political influence because I'm a, I'm a silly boy sometimes, okay? Just something I do. Give me the land. I'm gonna take Skiria as well. Yeah, all right, boom, yoink. I took three little pieces of land here. And the nice thing is I can now move these spare pops into my capital. And the bigger the pop rate in my capital, the more people will promote and demote to dip things other than tribesmen. And tribesmen don't make research. Okay, that's important. I think we should disband our levies. So I can't reband the levies for four months. Got it. But we did get some military experience from that, which is nice. The nice thing is we do have a port over here. It's kind of cool. Oh, we got some barbarians in Batavia. Let's raise the levies. I wish I could join them all together, but the game does not let you do that. <gasps> they pillaged my civilization value. Those jerks. We're gonna catch them and kill them. Oh, they settled. The Tuistic Bastarnay rebels settled here. 
Well, all right then. Disband the levies. Uh-oh, barbs have risen up here too. Hopefully those barbs go all the way down to Europe and not to me. This is kind of why I, I positioned myself the way I did in the hope that the barbs would not mess with me. With the exception of these ones. These ones I'm fine with. And these are two istic bastinets anyway. Ooh, a daughter was born to a tribal chief. Nice. All right, let's make a city. Boom. In the capital. Skadoosh. It'll take a little bit of time. The city's under uh, construction, so we will get no output here. Our granaries have been raided. We shall assist rebuilding. You guys need to do like a harsh treatment over here. Get that loyalty up, all right? We don't want this province civil warring. Not while we're on the cusp of greatness. Right, state religion happiness. That should make people a little bit more loyal. I'll pay a little bit of money for stability. That's fine. Ooh, we've got two nobles and they're starting to get pretty happy. But there is no output till January at least when we actually build this city. All right, 60 days, 50 days. Yeah, build that city. Get them. Nice. Saloya so became a city. So now this is a completely different type of province. If you if you look, also, I really don't like the fog in this game. Just saying. If you actually look, you can see like all these other places, they look unpopulated. There's nothing going on in there, but this this one's got a little city here. Now the cool thing about cities is, you know, you get population capacity, you get building slots, you get extra resource production, you get citizens, you get freemen, you get nobles, you get slaves in new ratios. The big thing is the population capacity. So there's a few good things you can build in a city. Also, we have an invention. So let's have a look at some popular national citizen output, legal patronage, diplomat reputation, aggressive expansion, impact, due process. I'm going to take military artisans here because that gives me one free province investment. And that province investment could be infrastructure spending, babouche, and that's 2.5% increase in the population capacity. And then if we come in here and we check the pop growth, you know, we still got years of food supply, but it is good to build granaries to get that food supply to keep going up and up and up. So, uh, 44 food every 12 months. It basically means we're gonna need a granary or two. Now we need to get the civilization level here up to 30, ideally. So that's gonna take us a little bit of time. It's gonna take some infrastructure spending. We could get some tax offices if we wanted to increase the cash flow in here. I don't think that's particularly important. I don't think we particularly need manpower either. Marketplaces aren't bad because if you can get enough marketplaces, you do get a bunch of local based trade routes. Having a lot of trade routes here could be really good. I think once you get this up to like 10, could be real good. Libraries would give us a little bit of extra research. But I think if it's growth that we want in this area, I do think granaries are the thing that we want to build. When it comes to this regional capital over here, we're going to want to move pops in here too. We don't want to move them from Salonia. No, 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 no. But we do want to move them from the other ones. So for example, this tuistic bastinet guy here, we can move up. And the tuistic bastinet over here, we can move up. Slowly over time, we will convert this into a city as well. And so if we kind of look through our territory, territory here, we can actually see that there's a decent amount of population growth happening throughout. Like we're about to hit a pop growth milestone in a lot of these places. It's, it's you not know, the growth is slow. Don't get me wrong, but it is happening. Let's get a couple of these touristic bastinets into the capital because they should assimilate their culture much faster in here. You'll see they'll they'll assimilate culture. They're a non integrated culture. That's fine, but they should assimilate pretty reasonably quick and become our du jour culture. Ah, looks like we can pick up a military tradition. So we could take uh, Celtic traditions or we can take Britannic traditions. I do think forest combat bonus is really powerful. Enslavement efficiency is really good. It allows us a steal slaves from other countries when we go to war with them. And that could be fun to take. But I think I'm going to go with the ambush, allowing us to do forest combat abilities. Let's, let's grab that. And I think, you know what? I've decided it's time that we enact religious freedom. Boom. And we're going to start moving towards a more centralized. I changed my mind. It's time to centralize. I'd like to import more fish. So I'll get those from Frisia. So we get an 8% national freeman happiness bonus, which is really good. Okay, the nice thing is all the tribesmen are starting to convert over to other types of pops. So this city is actually starting to crank out. Not like a huge amount of research, but enough. So looking at the families in my country, this family is scorned. So I need to put a... Uh, Dawal deities in a position here. And so Dabuta's Dawal deities here will take control because I don't want his family to be scorned. And he has a decent skill level here for this. So we can do coin minting initiative or barter economies. I think I'm going to do the coin minting initiative. This will allow my centralization to grow faster, but it'll also increase our civilization. It'll take some time to centralize this clan. And our tech output has improved quite a bit. And we're getting a massive bonus for being behind time rather. I am going to put a fortress in the capital and this is to protect my capital should I have to go to war. Uh, there's a lot of population in here 
And so if this province is captured by another player, it will actually suffer massive penalties and a lot of people will get scooped up and sent off to other people's lands. I do also want to build an academy because I want that no local noble desired ratio and the noble happiness. Nice, we got a fortress in here. Now, one thing I do need to consider is each pop type eats a different amount of food. I could build this academy here, make my nobles happier, or I could build the court of law. Freeman provide base tax and manpower. These guys provide manpower and research points. I think I think I might go with the um, citizen point of view here because I can get them to a higher happiness level. So let's build a court of law. This will give us 10% more citizens. And right now the current ratio is 34%. So this should be a pretty significant increase in the number of citizens in our town. Let's build another court of law. We want to get these citizens up to pretty high happiness. Yeah, now these guys are cranking out research for us and we're up to a 20% research ratio, which is nowhere near where we need to be. I like the idea of doing a quick infrastructure spending boost, 2.5%. Well, maybe we don't have to. Maybe we can save our gold for the buildings first. Because as we get the civilization value up, we do get more population capacity. So our citizen pops are at 95% output. We'd like to start buffing that output if we could. Once we get them to maximal happiness, I'm going to build another court of law because that is keeping our civilization value growing, which is exactly where we want it to be. It is making our tribesmen less happy, but it's making everyone else much happier. Yeah, now they're at 104% output. Let's get the new barbarians that have settled and then we're going to move them into the capital so that they can be converted into loyal citizens. I'm wondering how high I can make that happiness go. That might sound like a dumb question, but it is a real one. Oh yeah, I can't wait for these tribesmen to grow. Like little mushrooms, they're going to pop up and help me expand my empire. So it looks like we can only have three court of laws in this territory, which is actually fine by me because now I can start working on academies. All right, let's go ahead and build an academy. That will get us another 3% civilization. So we do have a little bit of a choice in the direction we want to take our nation. I've decided to go with the coin minting initiative to go more in a centralization direction. But we are kind of on a timer here because we have some land we need to conquer. And so that's going to require a little bit of invasion of our neighbors, which means I need to save up my treasury. Now I have almost fully built up my capital with all possible buildings that it can have. So some things you want to keep in mind is every 10 population in a city will give you plus one city building slot, which is really, really nice. I do want to have just one city per territory as a tribe, it's a little bit too expensive to build cities as tribes. But I would go as far as to say is like my city's in a pretty good space. Once I get the three academies, I will very much so be a top heavy organization. And my capital city will definitely be geared towards research. So once I have all the academies, I'll need to be building granaries and I'll also need to be building libraries. I am quite happy with the current situation with regards to my pop ratios. Like I've got a decent amount of nobles in here. I've got a really nice amount of citizens. The freemen are coming down and we've, you know, we've managed to bring down the number of tribesmen. Also, it looks like a lot of pops have actually grown inside my capital territory that I can kind of scoop up and move over. It is going to cost me some money to do this. And I am a little bit negative on money, but that's not, that's not the end of the world. As long as you're not negative for too long your empire your empire won't suffer too many bad sides there's some negatives for being in a deficit like you you get a little bit of a hit to your stability but once you're not too badly in deficit it doesn't doesn't matter that much having high stability also does give you population growth as well as happiness and a bonus to your research points speaking of our research points we're up to a 33 percent research ratio which is fantastic considering our starting position we are behind 34 years technologically but we are slowly building up those martial advances so i am looking forward to that well we're slowly building up all of the advances really. All right, let's scoop up a few more pops. We'll take you and we'll take you. We can gain centralization. I will just lose centralization. I can't afford the money cost. I need to save up enough money to hire this barbarian, which requires a hundred gold plus a little bit of extra to, to, to hire them. And I think before I conquer my neighbors, I would really like to build up the two more academies in my capital because that would get me a huge amount more research. The maximum civilization value in our capital is up to 25, which is fantastic because I believe once we get to 30, we can start to build things like aqueducts. But in particular, the aqueduct is quite useful. It's plus four population capacity, which when, you know, fed through some multipliers can lead to some really nice things. I guess you could argue that I'd be better off building granaries to keep the population growth high and let the local civilization level handle things and then focus on investing in infrastructure spending. I am tempted to also build up a port city in this location right here to build a port. If I were to upgrade this into a city, I think it could be really handy to have a port city because this port city could be where I build up my trade route ability. Basically, it's this. Yeah, local base trade 
trade routes. If I get a bunch of marketplaces and ports in that city, I would have a really, really good migration center, which could be kind of interesting to do. So it looks like I'm getting a trade route in my capital from the number of pops. So it would be nice to import something either I don't already have or that I would activate a bonus. Importing wild game would be really nice because that would actually increase my local tribesman happiness. I could import more livestock if I wanted food. Importing grain would be nice because the global monthly food modifier plus 5%. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and import wild game. Plus 4% tribesman happiness. A lot of the population in my capital will be tribesmen, so that's handy to have. Looks like there's been a bunch of population growth in Rubonia as well. I'm tempted to found a city. The question is where exactly? This is a minus 35% bonus and a plus 10% bonus. I'm not counting the is tribe because that'll go away when my civilization is better. So I am tempted to found like a little coastal city up here, but I think we'll handle all that once we have conquered, once we've united our culture. Let's focus on uniting our culture and then considering maybe some more expansions using migration down into this land. So we can hire these mercs and they will cost me 468 per month. And that is something we're gonna do. I'm gonna probably save up maybe another 100 gold before I declare the war. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and convene another war council. We have a new military tradition we can take. Now we took ambush. I think it would be good for us to take enslavement efficiency. National slave output is really, really handy. And enslavement efficiency is amazing. Let's go ahead and declare the war. We're gonna take Crononia. We will be fighting Venetia. Let's immediately raise our levies. We're gonna hire these mercenaries and we're gonna use the mercenaries to fight while we use our other armies to defend and occupy territory. It looks like one of our clan chiefs was killed in a fight, which means I have a scorned family. So I need to put a new guy in charge of my oratory advances from the scorned family. And this guy's actually pretty good. He's 39 years old, a skill is seven. He's got not much statementship, but now that he has this job, his statementship will actually increase slowly, increasing basically his effectiveness. Ooh, it might not have been the right time to actually attack here with these mercenaries, but I should, it should be fine. We have such a huge army here that I think fighting is totally acceptable. We do have the option to assault this fortress. I think I'm gonna hold off on assaulting for a little while. Also, we do have an economy screen where we can like raise taxes, lower taxes. We can increase wages, lower wages. We're sieging down their capital forts, which should make our life a lot easier when it comes to actually winning the war. Now, the thing about Imperator Rome is like, there is no limit to the amount of land. You can just like yoink, I'm pretty sure. You can just yoink all day. And so the sacking of Sudonia, we can gently loot. We can roam freely to gain a bunch of money, or we can use our cruel trait. I think we want the looting to be gentle. All right, we captured a pop, it's fine. We don't need to like obliterate it. And then the fortress will occupy all this land for us, which is nice. So step one of the war is completed. We've taken the enemy fortress. Now we're going to go capture some more land. Our cavalry is attacking their, their light infantry. Cavalry should win that light infantry battle as far as I'm aware. Nice, we captured another fortress, so we should be able to send this mercenary army up here to do a little bit of occupation, or rather army squishing. We've got to squish the enemy units. We're going to sue for peace. I'm just going to take all the land. We're going to take it immediately. Now we do have some choices with regards to how we want to deal with them. So our enemies deserve no quarter. We can become popular. We can lose aggressive expansion to banish them. We can imprison their leaders, or we can pass judgment on the important families. I'm going to say our enemies deserve no quarter just to take the popularity. We didn't get enough aggressive expansion to worry even. So I'm going to go ahead and disband the mercenaries. Um, we're going to disband our levies. And so now we are Salonia and we've basically united our cultural borders with the exception of the Rukia here. And I already have a claim on this. So if I attack, oh, they're in a defensive league with Gothonia. Mm. I would probably want to claim on Gothonia then, or maybe I would make Gothonia a vassal. I regret disbanding these mercs now. It's okay, we'll chill for a couple months. We'll see how the game develops. Uh, looks like our elder has been murdered. I'm gonna give this guy who's got 24 statesmanship in here. He's got pretty good finesse. So I'll put him in charge of that job. He should get really good statesmanship, which should lead to us getting quite a bit of political influence. So taking stock of this fortress, we've got a little bit of a problem in that our fort infrastructure is way over capacity, which means we're paying like huge amounts of fort maintenance. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna de delete this fort and I'm gonna delete this fort and I'm gonna start working. I think I'm gonna save up to build a new city over here, which will be like a coastal trade port city. I think that's, I think that's gonna be our next move. But yeah, I'm, f I'm glad to finally have Crononia united into a single you know, territory and there's a huge amount more food storage, which is fantastic. We do have to wait until the food storage actually fills up and it's filling up at 52 per month. We do need a new bodyguard and I will take 
this guy. He's from a great family. His skill is, in, is, is pretty similar, but he's also from a family that only has two people. It's good to employ your families to make them happy. We do have the Grove of Venetia over here that we can grab. All right, let's go ahead and build more academies because we want that research. So we'll get the final two academies we need. And then a combination of Court of Laws plus academies will put us into good shape with regards to the base research of this city. With these two academies finished, we should have a maximum civilization value of above 30, which is ideal because that unlocks aqueducts. Oh, perfect. We got our very first civic advance, which is going to be a 1% population capacity boost and a 1% monthly food modifier boost. So we love that. I'm also considering doing more infrastructure spending because infrastructure spending actually affects the whole province. And 2.5% population capacity doesn't seem like much, but it adds up over time across an entire thing, especially if I could get it up to like the base here is 15. So every 10% is 1.5 pop. So every 20 percent of this that I can invest into, we get a, 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 an extra two pops space across our entire area here. That's pretty damn good. We did get another invention. The question is, do I want to focus on martial advances or do I want to work on like civic advances? Let's have a look at what loyalty, what can we do in terms of loyalty? Okay, we're going to go for legal patronage because I like loyalty of characters. I also want loyalty of governors. Yeah, loyalty is important because if I go to my people here, the higher the loyalty, I believe, the better the political influence. So I think it just makes sense to have a loyal state. So we got the academy in here, which means the ratio of nobles should increase quite a bit. And they're honestly, they're quite a bit happier now. Um, our research ratio is up to, still up to 30%. It's probably not going to get much better than that. Ooh, it would be nice to get to urban planning. It would lower my build cost by 5%. Give you 5% population capacity, two more building slots, as well as promotion speed and food. Petition of minorities would make it cheaper to make cities. That'd be nice. The census data would give us population capacity too. I think we might work our way towards census data. All right, I moved 11 pops over to the settlement of Galindia Occidentalis. We'd love to rename it. Oh, nice. We got a religious advance, so plus 1% omen power. We got a try. Oh, hey, vandals have moved in. We got a martial advance, which is increasing our, you know, morale of our armies, all that stuff. Uh, so we got a few advances, which means we have these innovations that we can make use of. Now, I had wanted to get something here. Yeah, I wanted to get that census data to get the Freeman. So let's get central centralized comets, which will make it cheaper to change governor policies. And then we'll take census data, which will give us 5% population capacity and cheaper provincial investments. And we get a bunch of Freeman too. Let's definitely keep promoting infrastructure spending to increase the population capacity of this province. Ooh, nice. We got an oratory advance, which which is a 0.5% country civilization level advance. Now that will apply across my entire empire, meaning all of these tiny little benefits will get ever so slightly better, which is really nice. Now the question is, do we want to do urban planning? which will give us build cost, population capacity, global city building slots, all that stuff. Or we could do rural planning, which will increase our global settlement building slots. That is actually a really, really important decision that we make. Um, we're going to grab national citizen output plus 3%, which is nice, so that we can push down towards this decision. And this is going to really dictate just how many cities we build. Because like, for example, we could focus on rural stuff, things like farming settlements, which increases the amount of these grain, you know, resources that we can produce. So there's definitely something to be said for that. Hey, barbarians have risen and they should settle in these lands. That's fine. We'll slowly convert them to our culture. We need a new governor for this land. He's harsh and just, and he's pretty loyal. Now we should become a little bit disloyal because he has a pretty strong power base in the country. So I think it's time to unite our culture. So I'm going to save up about 150 to 160 cash. I'll hire this mercenary group again. I'll raise my levies and I'll declare war. This time I should have heavy infantry, depending on how nice the game is going to be to me. We're going to declare the war to take Rugia. Now we're at war with two nations. We're going to hire these mercs instantly and raise our levies, join them together over here. I will just give things a little bit of time. I think our goal is to make Gothonia a vassal so that we don't have to rule over these pops you know, directly and we could just focus on, you know, our culture. You know, maybe we'll just take land. Let's rule the land directly. Let's make it happen. Let's have some fun with it. All right, Mercs go capture the capital. We're defeated. Wow, okay. It right, looks like some of our cavalry got there a little bit too quick. Oh, Taruntia. So if I go to Taruntia Borealis, it can get base resource production of plus one, the Divine Hunt. Both of these would get wild game boosted as far as I can tell, which seems pretty insane because it's until the end of the game. 
space resource production. I don't know what that means, but I think it literally means that this place right here, that's an insanely powerful event because now I'm producing a huge surplus of wild game. That's crazy. And now everyone wants to import my wild game, which I will sell because it's worth a lot of money. See if we can catch some of these smaller armies off guard. So the one downside of playing a tribe is your armies get your levies get split up into these weird little chunks because of the way that the tribal levy system works. Tribal chieftains have to be generals during war, so they kind of they they bicker and they split up all the troops between each other, making your army less effective. But you do get pretty good levies, so that at least is an upside. I'm gonna see if I can catch this guy with my own cavalry. You better not enslave my pop, you jerk. It looks like we rolled well, so we will beat him and break his morale, hopefully kicking him back to his territory. But I'll keep you around here to keep them safe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Blockaded ports, I know. All right, we need a new high priest. Can we get like a younger guy in this role? There you go. This guy, he's 49. He's a little bit younger. His skills are bad. He doesn't have very much statementship, but he can do the job, I think. Nice, so we siege down their capital. Looks like one of my chiefs died and I need a new war chief. Someone who's not old, ideally. Oof. Okay, the youngest guy with decent skill. I guess we will take an older guy. All right, fine. Let the looting be gentle. Basically won the war. I guess all of this Venetia is in my capital region, so I may as well try to take it over. So I will wait until I capture this territory and I'll work on integrating this culture. Super peace, take everything. Our enemies deserve no quarter. Bada bish, bada bosh. Let's lower the levies. Put all that military experience. Nom 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 nom. Let's disband the mercenaries. And we also just completed the mission. Now we can unite Astia. We become a tier one formable. Our capital will get population growth, fort defense, local civilization level, and we get integrated culture happiness, manpower recovery speed, and pop assimilation speed. And our capital gets three free province investments, which is huge. Let's enact this. I do like the idea of continuing to promote infrastructure spending. We need to overcome that frigid climate. So I need at least a few more infrastructure spendings here just to overcome the frigid climate penalty. So I think I will go for more infrastructure spendings. Uh, but now we're just going to go to max speed. We're going to chill for a little while. We're going to build up our cash. If we look at the populations of these areas that we just conquered, a lot of them are the wrong culture, the wrong religion, all that stuff. So I'm going to go to here. I'm going to do religious conversion first. So we'll try to convert them re at least religiously. I don't mind if their culture doesn't change, but at least their religion should change. They should they should use our religion. Our religion is the right one. You know what I'm saying? They follow tuistic. We're matrix. Bunch of people are dying. It looks like we're getting to the, the death wave of the first generation. This family is scorned, so I will put one one of you in charge of probably the, you could be my officer. A little bit of shuffling always has to be done in the government when people die. All right, we got a new leader for our nation. This guy right here. He's got good martial, good charisma, good finesse, and good zeal, which will reflect in the traits of our nation. All right, we're going to relocate the capital to the coast here because I like this spot. I don't want to relocate my main capital, just the province capital. That'll hurt the loyalty, but that loyalty will come back. Then I want to just save up to found this city. All right, we've got up to 15% state infrastructure in here, which I'm really happy about because it means the total population of this area is starting to get really uh, quite big. I will need a granary city, I think, in here somewhere. But eh, it's not that big a deal. I like this, living off the land to lower our army tradition and get us a bunch of free pops. So I will take that. And the next one also gets us even more for national tribesman output, which will help us out a little bit. Also, I like the national fort infrastructure later, which is really nice. Just waiting for a little bit of cash to found a city. There's a way to see the demographics of your nation. Now you can see here, only 7% only of our population are the wrong religion. So they are slowly converting. All right, we're at the maximum political influence that we can store. So I'm going to go ahead and found a city here here for 310 gold and 77 political influence and then I should probably spend some of my political influence on infrastructure spending so I can get a population capacity boost it's a very small amount I could do fort infrastructure so I could have two forts in here I could get extra local city building slots which is probably fine or I could get import routes which is really good for generating revenue from trade I'm just going to go for infrastructure spending although actually entice business investments is a little bit cheaper and import routes are nice they do generate you a lot of revenue a couple of my chieftains fought to the death which means I have to assign a new chieftain annoying I guess we could import an extra copy of livestock here for the extra money eh, there we go a little bit of wine make people happier local freeman happiness we love to see it so we can can change our stance as well right now we have a neutral stance we can go to an appeasing stance we can go for a bellicose stance or a domineering stance I think a neutral stance is fine we'll leave it at neutral it's fine I'm waiting for the city to be built you know perfect so now the city is starting to produce it, it's no longer producing livestock it's producing earthenware, which gives citizen happiness. So we have a couple of different directions we can take this city. I think there's something to be said for maybe Freeman. 
I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move some pops over here to get them upgrading or downgrading, as it were, whichever direction they need to go. Cost us a little bit of cash. So we've got 14 people in this city and now they should start to diverge. And the question is, do we want to build a slave city with a huge amount of extra slaves? right, using mills and tax offices. Do we want to build like a trade city with like a port and marketplaces? I'm tempted by the idea of building a Freeman city, mostly because I like the idea of Fremen. Honestly, I think I just need tax income, which might mean I need to build a slave city. So the current gold output here is like 0 0.16. And if I build mills, it'll increase my slave happiness. Although slave happiness only lo lowers the unrest. It doesn't actually matter. But honestly, lowering the amount of unrest they generate is quite nice because these guys are generating how much unrest? Yeah, like a little bit, 0 0.18. Now they have pretty low political power, so it doesn't matter. Let's improve our import routes. It's always good to trade. Trade seems good. Oh, nice, we've got a religious advance, which is increasing our omen power, but it also means we can make our way to closer to the rural planning here, or the urban planning decide to go for. Another civic advance and a martial advance, excellent. Now we need less slaves to get a surplus of goods. Let's get another mill. Um, this will increase the slave output and the slave desired ratio, which is fantastic, as well as the happiness of the slaves. We are almost up to positive centralization, which is going to be really nice for us when it actually comes through. Oh, there we go. Another oratory advance, a little bit of civilization level. Perfect. Now we can get overseers for slave output, 3%. We're finally getting tech. I'm going to go for a national slave output, 10% here, because I think that extra little bit of gold will actually be useful. Oh, beautiful. We can get land tithe now. Oh, isn't it fantastic? How far behind technologically are we? We're only 32 years behind. It's amazing. We're actually advancing technologically. And we also just got six free tribe and pops. That's excellent. A new wave of population growth is about to hit here too, which is what I like to see. So that'll be a new wave of people we can migrate into the city for for reasons, reasons of an economic nature. And we'll build the final mill and this will get us up to uh, a really high slave desired ratio, 18% base slave output bonuses. So now they're up to what? 117.95% output. And that'll be another like another chunk. And don't forget as the civilization value increases, their output will also increase. And if we can get 19 slave pops in here, we'll get an extra earthenware that we can export to other nations. Let's do social mobility in here to speed up pops changing their classes. Then we'll build a tax office here for the small increase to the civilization value as well as the tax income. It'll take a very long time for this to pay itself off, but it will pay itself off in a long, long term. I am actually, I'm quite curious. If I click on the civilization map mode, you can see like Rome, highly, highly civilized. But if you come up here, there is like a little beacon of civilization right there, a little beacon. I'm gonna scoop up another pop into here so that we can get an extra building slot and then I'll be able to get one more tax office to continue to pump up this city civilization value, all the good stuff. It'll make more tax for me and it'll develop over time. Excellent. So looks like we picked up a couple of relics that we can pop into the Temple of Saloya. I'm going to put the ancient fertility symbol in there, deposit it, and the whale fat candles I'll put into Venetia. Sure. I think it's time to consider another expansion. Or I guess, you know what, we could chill. We are finally in positive centralization, meaning we're getting a research points bonus. We're getting a civilization level bonus and a pop promotion speed bonus. So let's focus on centralization and construction of cities and all that sort of jazz. So I think I'm going to relocate the capital of, oh, I can't because the loyalty is bad. Let's do a little harsh treatment, bring that loyalty back up to where it needs to be. And yeah, I'll probably be moving the capital and building a city here for this place because, it's, you know, logically it's on the river, which means it's on a trading river. It's on a plane, so it doesn't get the population capacity penalty or the civilization penalty. Nice, we got the Hibernian chainmail from one of our characters that is exploring. Now, when it comes to the province of Ossia, we did move the settlement capital over here. So we're going to go ahead and found a city in this settlement capital. And that'll take a couple years, but we'll start to vacuum up pops here and put them all together. And the eventual goal is like, these cities will generate a very small amount of research for us, but kind of more importantly, they will generate really good revenue. You know, if I compare like these lowly unpopulated areas, right? If I click around a little bit, you can see like there's basically no tax income, but when I come to the city, the city's generating actually pretty deep. And here's an even better illustration of that. Velte Borealis is 0.34, but the commerce income, now commerce income is worth a lot more. Speaking of which, let's import into here some new stuff. 
Trade routes, very, very valuable for, for income. All right, awesome. Sudonia Australis has become a city. It's, we're just chilling, we're waiting, and we will go ahead and export that leather. It doesn't matter who we export it to, we just like the income from it. I think the first thing we do is we, oh wow, well, Sudonia here has a lot of pops that we could vacuum in. A little bit of a prob problem is that the province is currently disloyal, so we can't actually move anyone over here. So we'll have to wait a little bit of time for this province to become more loyal, which honestly, maybe I'll fortify this province to increase its loyalty. It looks like the province has become loyal again. So let's pop in here. It looks like 33% is the break point. We're going to move a bunch of pops in here, starting from the bottom. Now we're at 14 out of 31. Now we're at 28. So we just hoovered up a bunch of pops in here. We would like to do social mobility, but this province is slightly less loyal. So I think harsh treatment is fine for now. So we got another little city down here. It's a little, 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 you know, little tribal city. It's cute. It's adorable. And now we got to save up cash to uh, continue to develop it. All right, let's centralize our nation slightly. We have an unmarried ruler. I'll arrange a marriage. It doesn't matter who he marries. We just get the loyalty. Uh, we do have a scored family that we need to take care of. Boom. And now, hopefully, we can pass laws. So do we want monthly tyranny reduced or monthly ruler popularity gain? I think popularity gain is ideal. And this will give us faster centralization as well, getting us closer to a good research ratio, but also civilization level gains, all that stuff. Lovely, lovely, lovely. lovely. Uh, let's take natural resources. This will be a 10% tribesman output boost and a bunch of free tribesmen, which is nice. Nice military tradition right there. Let's uh, sacrifice a pig to bring stability up a little bit quicker. Uh, my people are a little bit unhappy right now and I don't like the unrest. So right now we're a migratory tribe. I think our goal is to become a tribal kingdom. Also, my ruler keeps like, her, his wives keep dying. So I'm just, I'm, I, I'm no longer, I'm no longer doing that. Okay, perfect. Fort levels are actually a great way to deal with unrest. So it would be nice to get a fort level in here because I believe if I hover over this, you can see fort levels in province lowers unrest by minus 0.75. It's a great way to keep the slaves in line. So it's probably a good idea to build a fort in here. I could do a religious which isn't damage, which would give me plus one building slot in this area, which I guess is fine. Looks like my clan has died and we got, oh, excellent. We got another civic advance. Moral education, that's a 2.5% build cost reduction. Now we just need to get DR Katura. And then we can go for either urban planning or rural planning. I don't know which I want to do. DR Katura has been collected. Oh, man, it's going to be hard to make this decision. I think I'm going to go with rural planning because urban planning is cool, right? Don't get me wrong. It's super, super cool. But this, this lets me do things you can't normally do with rural territory, which is kind of fun and kind of funky. And I kind of want to find out what it's all about. So let's take rural planning. Boom. I could form a tribal kingdom and become a settled tribe. Let's do it. Boom. Our stability decreased, which is fine. We could take an oratory idea. And if we take an oratory and a military idea, we will actually get a tribesman happiness bonus. Oh, we could take a civic idea. Build time, build cost, slave output. I like the idea of build cost and build time. And I also like the civilization level. Well, let's just go ahead and take state religion. Boom. Country civilization level and standardized construction. I don't care about this national tribesman happiness. I like this. It's like I'm civilizing my, tr my, my tribe. Maybe I should have gone for a giga wide tribe uh, so we, we got our first thing here maybe we could go for build cost reductions there we go 2.5 percent build cost over here if we go for standardized measures logistics bureau and pythagorean measurements like it love it let's our money go a little bit further we could build more buildings loving it absolutely loving it how this empire this this nation is developing and this is this is the really fun thing i love about imperator this is the stuff you can do this is why we need to bring imperator back dude this is a fun game it's an interesting game you know what i mean bring it back bring it back bring it back oh let's pop in a tax office a skadoosh can i migrate oh yeah yes i can so I just need one more pop in here and I can build another tax office. I would want to build a fort over here, mostly to suppress the unrest. And also it's it's to protect my population centers. Okay, the matter of Venetia. I forgot that there was a whole mission tree in this game. Let's consult the council. We have a goal of settle Crononia. So they want three cities. I think one will be coastal and then one will be like a granary city in the down here somewhere. I totally forgot about this whole mission thing. And then there's like unique missions for different nations. It is nice to see a research ratio of 55%. We are finally climbing our research ratio up to something actually useful. We're still 38 years behind on technology, but listen, listen, right? Baby steps, little tippy tappy baby steps. Let's have a look. What kind of alliance are we looking at here? All right, we could take on both these guys and take on Rugia, I think. But do I want to just keep chilling and improving my territory? I kind of want to just chill. I just want to chill and improve my, my lands. I enjoy it. 
I'm having fun building cities and doing little meme things and basically screwing around. We need to get hired. We need to enact the Hillford Initiative. I'm going to need to get above 60% centralization. So I'm going to go ahead and activate the Hill Fort initiative. That'll cost me a little bit of stability. And then our stability will recover. Our centralization will absolutely shoot up, however, which is going to help with the research penalty that you take as a tribe, which is slowly getting us up to a more reasonable research rate. All right, we're going to found a city in Galindia, Oxentalis. All right, 160 days and this bad boy will be ready. Also, let's check in with the world. Oh my God, Thrace has gone hard. Egypt is doing okay. The Seleucids, oh my God, Moria. Jesus. Ooh, Scythia is big. Big old Scythia. These are the best of times. We got ourselves a fat city in here. It already has a port. And I think this is meant to be a trade city. So I, I think a fortress and some marketplaces like feels like the right vibe. Let's start importing pops into this piece of land. Okay, I burnt all my cash putting pops in here. Right, there you are. Okay, we got the fort being constructed. I need a little bit more cash to move more pops in here. Let me scoop up you, I'll scoop up you, scoop. Am I gonna have five more pops in here? Well, let me just, ooh, civic advance, population capacity increasing. That means we could take the logistics bureau for an extra capital to import route. Let us import something here. Furs, let's get furs. Ooh, oratory advance, 0.5% country civilization level. And then we can take Pythagorean mathematics, making it cheaper to build buildings. Any more grand temples? Oh, hello. So we got all the build costs that we could find. What other wacky things can we get our hands on? I guess population growth would be pretty good for us. So let's see here if I can type in growth. We got grain rations, bread stamp, migration. So it looks like we'll focus on some religious advances because I want to pick up all this national growth that we got. Go to planning mode, integrated culture happiness, the bread stamp. Okay, so that's going to be the direction we go here. And then I think we'll go reduce governorship into reintegrated progenies. And that should get us all the population growth, which should yield us. The more important thing isn't that it's going to get us more pops, it's that it's going to get us our pops faster. We can also codify our state lands, allowing Saloya to gain 10 civilization value, which is perfect. The capital city is like shabam. It's got a huge civilization value which is really, really damn nice. Look at that, population output 65%. We're churning out like 10.75 base research and without multipliers, it'd be really nice. We are at like 65% efficiency. We're 29 years behind. Oh, it's getting better. Monthly ruler popularity gain. That's actually quite powerful. Makes your ruler, you know, a little bit nicer, a little bit happier. People like him. Yeah, I know we're in a deficit. It's not ideal. Ah, looks like we got a new leader. Clan chief died. This is, this is why we need to become, investigate tribal reform. We need to get closer to that. All right. Another advance, let's take Fug plus 2% integrated culture happiness. Skadoosh, that should yield us a little bit of a, a boost. At the very least, it'll keep our slaves and stuff happier, I suppose. I don't actually know how these markets work. I've never used them before, but I am curious. Let's go for national fort infrastructure. Oof, I think we need to fortify this province or we're going to be paying through the nose for these forts. I guess I could also just reduce the number of forts in here by one and then replace it with a library. Oh, I actually like that library play. We're having a serious stability problem due to like a die off of leaders <laughs> every time you know every few months someone dies and then we got a civil war and all sorts of bad stuff happening i need to exalt this well i can't exalt him maybe i'll make friends with him see if he'll be my buddy all right perfect i'm now friends with this guy which should make him uh oh famine and that makes him loyal enough to consider let's make friends with this other guy oh, he's 77 years old why do you guys got to be so old can you guys die off i think if they die off we'll be fine okay one of them died <laughs> It literally, as I said it, one of them actually died. And then the, this, the civil war, you know, warning went away. I do like to see that like little green sea of civilization and my culture and, you know, trade goods and unrest and loyalty. We've got a supply map mode. Oh, I do like the fortress. You see how we protected the, the blue slats kind of protected. What's this? Oh, we got a holy site map mode, huh? Also, I haven't even, I haven't even begun to play around with like the ability to build great wonders. I could be like, yeah, let me just build this out of wood. My wonders are built out of wood because I can't afford the stone. This would be a tier one. Oh, shoot. I can select effects. This is cool. Oh, shit. Tax and commerce. Import routes. It's kind of cool. Like, let's say I wanted to build a tier one wonder. Here we go. This is a tier one tower. Honored tribesmen, fertile nation. These are some pretty cool things. And you can be like, hey, I want 
control range. I want integration speed. I want manpower. I just literally want better fortresses. It does cost a lot of money. They do take a long time to build, but they are really cool. Let's say we wanted to go for like max tier pyramid made of gold. Can we build the whole thing out of gold? Oh shoot, yes we can. I'm trying to figure it out. I want to get the max tier. Anyway, the point being, you can do really cool stuff with this for national bonuses. Like once you start to churn out an empire capable of building giant wonders, it's really cool. I'm going to make a religious endowment here so that I can get extra building slots because that should affect both the capital and this little port city here. I'm curious to see if I can actually get actual trade routes from this. This is cool. Okay, we got the local cult thing. Let's get another marketplace. And then in the capital, I will get another library because that's what I want. Okay, I built another marketplace. Trading permits from Pops. So I think local import routes. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh, that's it right there. Okay, since it scales off citizens and nobles, it would be better to build this in the cap. Right, okay. I understand this building better now. So if I want a trading city, really what I want to do is I want to get a bunch of nobles and citizens rather than go straight for the marketplace. Right, okay. Okay, I just I just missed this piece of the UI is all. Well, now I feel a little bit silly because now I need to increase the number of nobles and stuff in here to actually get trade routes, which is what I want in my capital. So what do I actually want to do in this city then? if it doesn't make sense to go for marketplace. So it looks like the ratio is one noble to five citizens gets you the same amount, but they eat way too much food. And I want those, I want those food eating sieves in my capital. So I think I might be better off just building like granaries in here. Yeah, I think we'll get rid of the marketplaces. My thought is here, if this is a support city, I think I need to build mills because slaves eat less food which means there's more food left over for the capital. Slaves and granaries, and we might even skip the tax office. I don't mind getting the tax office in some of these cities because that's the job of these cities is to produce taxes it is a very it is a vanishingly small amount of tax bonus right let's be real but hey it's something pays itself off over a long period of time so let's start increasing our slave ratio here okay let's go ahead and investigate tribal reform which will add it to our mission pool which means we need to finish the matter of Venidia. So let's go ahead and control Rugia. Okay, so in terms of levies, we do have some rather large levies and we do have the cash flow to support really strong mercenaries. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of slow down here, wait for a little bit of cash to come in and then we'll start doing that. Also, what's our research ratio? Oh, it's looking good. We got a 61%. Oh, nice. Taruntia Borealis will get Divine Hunt again. <laughs> Oh, so much wild game. Delicious, delicious wild game. Everyone in the world wants my wild game. Okay, we've got the cash flow to recruit these mercenaries and recruit them with a surplus, I might add. So we'll move those forward. Mercenaries are going to do the majority of the fighting for us. I am going to change their action here and put them on a skirmishing deception style attack. Let's declare war to take Helvaconia. Boom. And then we're going to go ahead and raise all of our levies and unite them over here. And we'll see if we can't catch them off guard with our mercs. So the main job of the mercenaries is to actually do the fighting. It's the real power of our army. Ah, looks like we lost the fight because we didn't have enough morale, but that's okay because we can catch them off guard. Boom, lovely, we caught them. These mercenaries kind of failed me, to be honest. A little bit sad about that, considering how much I spent on them. Let's see, tribal representatives would give you political influence, whereas this one would give you pop promotion speed. Let's do sedentary bureaucracy. That will hurt our stability. That's fine, though, because if we go to religion, we can sacrifice Ina Pig and get ourselves that stability back. Catch these guys off guard if we can. It'd be nice. Looks like it's going well for us. I really don't like this whole, like, try to predict what your enemy is going to use. And, oh, you should do this and do that. And do -do 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 -do. I just, I think it would be nicer if the general did it for me. I don't want to have to micromanage. I just, I want, what I want to be able to do is to click this and say, hey, pick your own tactic. I don't care. Just roll a dice. I'm going to be just as good as that. Rather than trying to, like, me try to figure out exactly how I should use this piece of gameplay. And blah, 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 blah. Because I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, we've more or less taken out the enemy armies. Let's go ahead and start soaking up their fortresses. And I may start doing some assaults and um, to speed this up. Let you get a little bit of a morale before we assault. Ooh, nice. Population capacity, global monthly food modifier. That gives us an invention. That means we can take herbalism for the food modifier and we're one step closer to grain rations. And we are currently only 23 years behind time. That's very nice. Okay, what happens if we assault? We lose a lot of morale really quickly, but we do take it really fast. Oh, they hired mercs. Those absolute jerk faces. Who hired them? Lamovia did. Can't see how much cash they've got in the bank, but it's probably a lot. Did you guys roll and win this battle? Okay, they will accept peace as it currently stands. 
And they are about to try to break my siege here. Hopefully we succeed. We did, which means now we have proper defense. And a martial advance in the battle as well. Oh, we love it. We love it. Let's grab grain rations for that pop growth. Let's have a look. What kind of piece can we take? All I got to do is take this Krugium fort. And if I can take that fort, I think I can scoop up these two provinces too. Let's see what we can do. All right, so I'm going to assault pretty hard here in the hopes of getting a victory perfect can i now sue for peace i'm going to reset i'm going to suggest okay they won't accept this deal because i'm demanding a lot of land but if maybe we assault their capital too we can make this work i think we want to get to bread stamp next we got a oratory advance which is really nice so i'll go for mass pewter production gives me integrated culture happiness lovely now i am being sieged all the way over here but that's fine this is all kind of low value land that i don't care that much about they will now accept peace yoink thanks for all the land Nope, my enemies deserve no quarter. Let's go ahead and disband all levies. I'm also going to disband this stupid mercenary that didn't do what I wanted them to do. Now, we do have a little bit of starvation. That's fine. We'll figure it out. So now we control Rugia. So we'll get a conqueror's statue in here. We'll get population assimilation speed, migration attraction. So is that in this exact province here? And that's the whale fat candles. But now we're bigger. Problem we have now is a lot of our guys are of the wrong culture. So there's going to be a little bit of a cultural assimilation period. Let's let time pass. So yeah, we're getting a cultural assimilation. I think focusing on the religious assimilation part is better here. So in here, I'm going to go for religious conversion because we're better. We're better at religious conversion, honestly, is really what it comes down to. And if we can get them to convert to our religion, they should convert their culture a little bit easier. And as a way I can show that you can see here, he's assimilating and because he's my religion. He's assimilating at full speed. Whereas if I go over to some of these guys, he's assimilating really slowly because he's not our he's not our same religion. We are going to be dealing with some unrest in some of these places. And the good news is we are also going to be doing a lot of trade. People are going to be wanting to buy stuff from us. I'm going to go for a trade overview. And I'm going to say accept all trades, but block trades that would break a surplus. I'm just going to let the AI trade with me manually. I don't, I don't like automatically. I don't want to have to manage it. But yeah, this is great. We've managed to expand our, our empire quite a bit. Quite importantly, we moved along in our mission. Now I need to annex Elysia as well, which means I need to go to a war with the Bastine. So who are you guys with? You have an alliance with Suonia. I think I'm going to chill for a while. I'm going to wait for a little bit of cultural assimilation to happen. I think that's a good move. Let's go ahead and pick a bread stamp for that 0 0.1 or 0 0.05 population growth. Or pop growth should increase quite a bit now. And also the nice thing is if I convert people to my state religion faster, they will actually be happier because I'm, I'm slapping that state religion happiness button constantly. So the question is, do we want to become a kingdom or do we want to become a democracy? Because I believe if we want to found a the mission tree, it's going to depend on the mission tree we go for. You know what? Let's just abort these missions. I don't care. Like if we go to tribal reform, we can favor republicanism or we can favor monarchism. Let's go for republicanism. Sounds like fun. Oof, Rome is getting thick. Rome be scary, man. I am interested in making a metropolis. That would be kind of fun in my capital if I could do that. Oh, damn. I didn't realize how good a foundry was. I need to research blacksmith apprentices. So I think that is up here. I've already, I've already kind of searched for it because I just realized it off screen. This thing would give me the foundry city building. Also, it would give us like a little bit of military bonuses. That's pretty cool. We are at 100% centralization, which is giving us a 50% research bonus, 10% civilization, and some pop promotion speed. I totally forgot to build my third academy, or I accidentally deleted it. I don't remember which. Uh, let's start building some aqueducts in the capital, because I would like to grow the city a, a little bit faster. And I think plus four pop at the moment actually has a lot of value for me. Honestly, I think this is a good enough point to, to leave off for Imperator Rome. Look. It's a fun game. Bring it back. It has potential. There's some stuff here. I really enjoy the tribal stuff. I want to see tribal gameplay. Like, I want I want more of this. I want more of building an empire from nothing. I want more of just going super wide and migrating my tribes all over the world. And oh, I love it. It's super fun. Super, 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 super fun game. Can we please get more? I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time.